What's up, gang? It's been a couple of weeks now since Million Mars released their training hall facility, the new building in the game. And we've had loads of people in the Discord, in on YouTube, all over the place asking us um, how to use the training hall. Like, what's, what uses do the training hall have? Um, what's its importance? And what kind of things is it going to do in the future? So, we're going to give you the rundown of what it does and all of those things in this video. So, keep watching. So let's just get straight into it, shall we? Um, what do you need to know about the training hall? Well, best way to explain things is to is to show you, obviously. So um, I just have the one training hall, which you can see here. I've just got it on my land down in the bottom right here. So we can open that up. Um, at the moment, it's not clear whether you there's any benefit to having more than one um, and whether there's any benefit in actually upgrading the training hall. So um, at the moment, I'm not even bothering. I'm just, I'm just keeping mine as is. At level one for those who haven't got a training hall yet or, or, or who've just got one basically when you open it up and you place it on land first thing you need to know is it only takes up 15 land space which is really good that's not very big at all so you can squeeze it in on on any land that you've got secondly um you've got all these categories here so basically what's happened in the game since before mom implemented the training hall system and now they've got it is we've gone from a system where you can just go out and do any task possible in the game to a stage now where every task is being categorized under one of these categories so we have chemistry fabrication machining robotics electrical life science mining scavenging so there's there's eight in total um, and if you've just got this, these will all start at level one. So if I click on that, you can see my chemistry says level seven. That's because I've been training it up and I'll go through that as well. But they will all start at level one. What's happened is if we just go to some of these tasks here, you'll notice that there are certain things which uh, you might not be able to do until you reach a certain level. Right. So we're now going to show you, I'm going to show you some a few examples of where you're going to need to level up your training facility for those different categories to be able to undertake different tasks. As I just mentioned, um, there's, there are a variety of different ones. So for example, if I could just click on a 3D print shop, and I click on make battery backup. Um, you can see here it says ba battery backup zero, uh, recipe. So you need a recipe for it, which will come to. Uh, fabrication level. So this is where the, the, the training facility directly influences what tasks you're able to do so this one here fabrication level has to be over level 35 so you have to be level 35 or above to be able to, to make battery backups that's really high and i'll show you in a minute how tough it is to get to that stage um there are others as well so novice scavenging tools requires level 24 fabrication as well so if you're if you're someone who loves scavenging this is going to be essential because there's a, there's these new tools that are coming as well which we'll speak about in a moment as well so the 3d print print shop the tasks in here are all related to fabrication if we look at the chem lab it's obviously going to be related to the chemistry category so make concrete you can see chemistry level more than 25 metis weave over 30 so you can start to see a trend here different buildings generally require different uh kind of uh training training uh categories so we're just going to go back to the training hall and we're just going to have a look at these task categories again so train chemistry that was the one we were kind of just looking at with the chemistry the chem lab basically if you start off at level one you can see there requires a certain amount of chemistry xp and it requires a certain chemistry level so if you start in level one chemistry level is going to be one so you'll be able to go up to level two and um, that will have that requirement already chemistry xp you will need to gain a certain amount of xp before you can actually level up your um your chemistry um so it becomes basically mum is slight slight it's kind of slowly becoming a bit of an rpg click based rpg and i think it's really interesting we'll come to that in a moment as well if we just go down you can see that it requires a little bit of stamina a little bit of dusk and actually requires a research paper which we will be talking about in this video skip ahead if you know about this and you want to see about that um there'll be um timestamps in the description you can see here once we get all of these requirements and we hit this confirm button we're going to get chemistry level and training what benefit does this do as we just saw 
me up, kind of leveling up my chemistry will enable, enable me to be able to do some of those more advanced tasks, which are presumably going to be able to allow us to make more materials, which will sell for higher prices. So you can see here that there's going to be this kind of navigational direction in which you're going to need to decide, okay, which of these do I want to focus on? What is my sort of uh, direction in this game going to be? So mom is starting to kind of simulate real life in the sense that people in their careers go out and they specialize. So, you know, if someone becomes a baker, they're good at baking. If someone becomes a bus driver, they're an excellent driver, usually. Sometimes they're not. You get the point. What this means is that you focus more of your time becoming good at one thing. In Mom, a similar thing is happening here. Realistically, the time it takes that, you know, I've been doing this now since the training facility come out two weeks ago, and I've already hit a bottleneck with the research papers. And you can see that it's going to take an age to be able to reach level 30, level 35 to do some of those tasks that we just we just looked at, you know. So let's let's just take one of those for, for as an example. So fabrication, we looked at the 3D print uh, building and you saw that one of the things required level 30 um, before we can even, I think it was the battery, before we can even make that material. So looking at the building, when I start off at level one, it was really easy. I didn't need much, um, much uh, XP and I could pretty much just do a few tasks, get some XP, and then level it up to level two straight away. You can see here now that I need 250 fabrication XP before I can now level it up to level three. That seems easy, but to get that XP, I have to be putting jobs through on buildings and the tasks that give me that fab fabrication XP. If we could just go back to my 3D print hall and we look at that again. Let's say, uh, which one was it? Create air tank, that one's gonna take we're going to need level 30 fabrication to get to that stage. So if we go down, you can see here, look, if we, if we if I make one of these air tanks, I get between 25 and 50 fabrication XP. But obviously I can't make that yet. So how am I getting the XP? Well, not through making aluminium plates because that gives you machining XP, as does the rovers and any sort of metal will give you that, that XP. Salvage Rover gives you robotics XP, machine parts, machining XP, um, so actually what we need to do is we need to look at one of my other buildings where we have some lower level ones which we can do that will give us that fabrication XP that we need. Okay, battery. We can't do that. We need level 35, but you can see that gives you really high XP. Novice scavengers tool is the same problem. But if we start to look at some of these others, like make electronics parts, I, I can make that. Everyone who has a building level two 3D 3D print shop can make this. Um, so it's kind of like a moderate level level one. Basically, every time you create one of these, you get 10 to 24. Now, fabrication is really hard to level up because there aren't really any low level tasks to be able to level it up. If we take a look at water, for example, which most people do, most people make water, you can see that gives you life life science XP. So if you're pumping, making water, water every day, you're going to get your level up your life science XP really quickly coffee chemistry um so I, I do a lot of coffee so i've been getting a lot of that a lot of chemistry xp sabatier uh however you pronounce it that is chemistry xp so you, basically first things first go through all your buildings and understand what building what task gives what xp okay so we looked at the xp just then and some examples of how you get it so just to run through electrical xp you can get that from pa uh, charging power cells Life science does all sorts of things, anything to do with sort of um, organic matter. So uh, I think soil does it actually, does soil do that? Yeah, soil does it, I think food does it as well. Um, so that's a relatively easy one for new players to, to, to do. Mining, you, you're doing that through your mining rigs. Uh, machining, it's all your metals. Robotics, that's one that I've not done much of yet. Because uh, again, that's more advanced level stuff. And scavenging, which a lot of new players would know about. Um, Basically, if you just hit this button down here, you should get some XP. So you see down there, I've got some regolith and some scavenging XP. So I don't do much scavenging, so I've not leveled that one up much. But you can see now, to get to level 3, I need to get it up to 505. Benefits, just to recap, the benefits are that you'll be able to unlock stages, um, making tasks, more advanced tasks, um, as you level up your buildings. Now, really importantly, the most important thing is at the moment, not all buildings and not all tasks have had sort of levels implemented into them. So we've just seen a few at the moment. I've heard from, you know, uh, grill, grilled cheese sandies and the mom guys that it sounds like in the future, they will slowly or maybe all in one go, 
implement that different buildings and different tasks will require different levels, different skill levels for you to undertake those tasks. So I think they're giving people like a bit of a, bit of a chance to start to upgrade their levels at the moment. And at some point they should be implementing that. So that'll be interesting to see. So you, you must be thinking as well, like electrical, for example, there's no requirement at the moment to have higher level electrical level. So there must be a future reason for this. And um, we know that there's going to be like solar batteries and stuff coming into the game. There's all going to be like a whole new route for solar power, presumably that is likely to be sort of a future future route so you know there are some players in the nfg i mean his theory is doing this he's leveling up his electrical frantically because he's he's predicting that there's going to be maybe bigger ways to get more power to like reinvest into your stuff at higher levels so that's one he's really keen to do i've been going on electrical life science is another one i've been doing um because i feel like there's going to be some interesting updates to the to the greenhouse and food and stuff in the future and mining as well i've been doing a lot of mining so that's that's kind of where i'm at, at the moment these aren't particularly high and there's a reason for that which we're going to find out about now i know this is quite a boring video visually but it's really important this is probably one of the most important things you, you need to learn about in million on mars so get to know it explore it start to map where your xp is coming from and then we can kind of you know then you can you can build from there and you can start to map out your your the future for your settlement um if you're playing in the nfg guild we're doing this as well in the guild and once we've implemented the sub dao you know this is going to be one of the things that you can influence what direction do we take what skills do we develop all of that sort of thing i would recommend not to focus on anything sometimes you're going to get xp just from doing tasks that you need to do but if you're deliberately going out your way to try and level some of them up pick ones that you think per personally are going to be important for the future or which interests you uh next up we're going to look at another requirement so once you start to get to like level six level seven let's take electrical for example once you start to get to level six you start to need this thing here novice electrical research so some people will be asking what's this i've already got a library you might understand what that is and, and in the past you might be thinking what, what the hell am i going to use these for these things in the library so if we just go to my library I'll just explain. So we open up my library. It's level two. It's quite important if you if you want to get to these advanced levels to have level level two library because there's certain like you can't get a lot of these research papers um, with a level one building um, unfortunately. But if we just look on here, if I need to make a novice electrical research paper, I need to undertake electronics 101. Um, and the library takes it takes a long time to get these. So it, you know it takes I think the best part of two days before you get one of these through. So if you can afford it, get several libraries, go mad on your libraries because because you're going to need a lot of these to continue leveling up your training hall um, and get to those stages. Like I've just imagined to get to fabrication level 30, you know, it's going to it's going to take an age. So electronics, novice electrical research, you need one of them. You basically just need to put that through. You need a few bits in there. They're not very expensive bits, uh, materials. You do need a research paper, which you can get through your libraries once a day, and then you can just pump that through. What I would just just to make you aware some of these do change every day they just kind of mix up and they some disappear and some new ones come in so if i'm just looking at this now we've got electronics fabrication bamboo studies life science machining i don't know what's missing there but but if you have a look back that there, there's generally like a couple of these kind of switch in and out every couple of days so it's worth it's, it's worth just bearing bearing that mind to be aware of that so once you eventually get a research paper from your library I'm losing my words and um, you need to then go into the shop now this is another important thing so what will happen as you go through your levels in your training hall let's say we're a level seven with the with the um training facility for my electronics in the moment i just need one electronic novice level uh paper which is nice and easy that just means i can level up once i've got the right xp um, and i already have enough xp well, once you start to get to higher levels, you then need to come into the shop and you will need to start blending up research papers for the respective different um, categories in your training hall to be able to level up and level up, level, level up and level, level up. So again, it's going to get harder and harder, more difficult, more time soon. You're going to need more research papers. It could just take longer if you don't have enough libraries. So I've seen quite a few people starting to stack libraries now just to go mad on this. Um, and you can sell the research papers as well for quite good money. So, you know, it's another um, income stream for you if you ever need it. And um, if we look here, electrical. So to get the next, so it goes um, novice, apprentice journeyman expert uh master artisan 
So that's that's the order. So like the upper reaches of the training facility, I've not got there, but presumably we'll need. You know, I, I you know after a couple of levels, I'll probably need to a, an apprentice electrical research paper into my training hall to be able to get to the next level. So as you can see here, you need three novice electrical research papers to blend up into into one. So 100% success. So there's no risk there. But as you go up, this this one journeyman requires three apprentice ones and uh just to make one journeyman and you can see the eight percent success so the risk starts to increase the further up you go which makes it even more harder and even time more time consuming so those lucky people like paxson yes paxson you know who you are who gets all the luck i'm sure he'll just like whiz through this with no no failure rates but yeah just again another big thing to bear in mind and be aware of as you're starting to build up your settlement to grow it in the right direction guys I bet I'm not the only one who's been in a situation where I'm trying to do my daily clicks, trying to play my games on wax, and I'm just running out of CPU. It's a major, major issue. How do you get around it? Well, it's really simple. There's a website called Rocket CPU. Link in the description. I'm just going to really quickly show you how to use it. Basically, you can rent CPU, and it's really, really cheap, really affordable. Um, so, for example, if I want to rent uh, seven days worth uh, of wax, um, up to a value of 100 wax i click this button and it tells me it's going to cost me seven wax easy job done as you find out now there are so many parts to the training hall and the whole leveling up system it is quite complicated it does quite take quite a, time, a bit of time to get get through the next big thing i wanted to kind of raise and talk about was um fabricate uh, di the different tools that we're not now getting fabrication tool is one example of it you also get scavenging tools if i look at this example of the bat battery you can see here like you know not only do i need to get a recipe for that so that comes back to the library which is a complete different video in itself that's a different use of the library not just for research papers but if you, if you look down here you can see right okay it needs all of these consumes all of these things and the fabrication tool so what on earth is a fabrication tool tools are things that you'll be able to craft or you can get them in um, in uh, in crates and boxes that mom kind of sell on a weekly basis there'll be some dropped in I'm sure at different points and um, so you can see here I've got 50 fabrication tools which I got from a, from a pack I had 50 scavenger tools I've used 10 of them and I've got 50 machining tools now at the moment these aren't required to, to do different tasks but it's possible in the future that these will be required to do some more more of the advanced tasks so that means you'll need to start buying or making these tools to be able to then continue to do the tasks that you need to do. So it's another layer of complexity in the in the mom in the mom ecosystem in the mom economy, but it does make it more interesting. Um, so if we just go down, we're, we're not going to go into fabrication tools or machining tools because at the moment I'm not using them. I've got no use for them. But we will have a look at scavenging. So I've got I've, as I said, I've, I've used ten already. So if we just go onto my land, I hit this button, add forty. That will use up one of the tools. Um, so if I want to level up my scavenging, I need these scavenging tools now. That's for the advanced scavenging option. For the, the basic one, you don't need it, I don't believe. So we click on that and just do that one. Um, and then we go back and look at my inventory. You can see that my scavenger tool has gone down to 39. So I only used one with the advanced one, not for the basic scavenging. So advanced scavenging is going to be interesting in the future. I've heard um, from different sources that it sounds like higher levels of scavenging you go, the more likely it is that you're going to pull more rarer kind of materials and, and maybe some dusk and, and some stamina and all that sort of stuff in the future as well. There will be benefits to this system. Now, obviously, to get the scavenging tools, you need to make that in one of the buildings we looked at earlier. So it's kind of interesting, complex system, but I'm liking it. I am liking it. Next up, we're going to be looking at a really important resource. So if you click on your profile up here, you can actually, if you just click on profile, you can actually see all your skill levels, which is really nice to see. So you can see that like, you know, I've actually hit, whilst I'm chemistry level six, that only requires 1500 XP. I'm on 4000. So your XP continues to go up even if you're not able to like unlock the next level with the research papers or whatever. So basically I need to get a move on and start making some research papers for that. Um, what I was going to show you was the old player guide. So this is really, really important. So if you go on here and you go down to um, speciality buildings and then down to training hall, there's a whole section on training halls. Go and read it. It's really good. It tells you quite a lot, but it doesn't tell you everything, which I like as well. Um, so if you go down, um, you can see here professions. This is what they're calling. It. We should have been calling this from the start, professions. 
So I'm going to become a professional uh, chemist and life scientist, um, which weirdly mimics my real life situation. But you can see here like scavenging easy, advanced scavenging medium, electrical easy, life science easy, chemistry medium. Fabrication, as we've seen, takes quite a lot. Um, expert and robotics expert. And you can see here that as well, like um, every profession has six tiers of progression that you designate your level of mastery achieved. So those are the novice, apprentice, gentleman, expert, master and artisan that we looked at. And you can see they're unlocked at different levels. So novice is up to 24, apprentice to between 24 and 49 and so on. So that's probably where those, those research papers will start to be used. And yeah, you can find out more info in here as well. So it's a really, really nice resource. So that's kind of it from me today on the old training hall. It's quite complex as we've already discussed. Um, I mean, there's so much to it really. Like there's even stuff around like, I know, you know, soon there's going to be these habitats and other people are going to be able to come on your land and utilize your land. And there's some possibility that the, the leveling up system will influence how those people act on your land as well. So there's all sorts of stuff. And where this is really going to is clear that mom see this as a way of mimicking sort of like real life economies where people do specialize and they become baristas or they become chemists or they become you know certain things and they focus all their time and effort on that because realistically like there are so many elements to this game you can't do all of them one you don't have the you don't have the land space so you're never going to have enough land space two you're never going to have enough stamina and that kind of reflects real life i guess where you can only work so many hours in a day so that's quite a nice feature so yeah, let me know what you thought of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Go and follow us. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube, please. That would be very nice. And um, yeah, we've got Guild, the Gang Gang City, as denoted by our citizens. If you would like to join our Guild, come and join our Discord. We can tell you lots of things. There will be a link to the, the light paper um, below in the description. And there's a link in that paper to the Nefty Block site where you can go and buy a citizenship card. So you will get dividends um passive income from being part of our guild being part of our um our city so that's really exciting you'll also get voting rights and all sorts of stuff um and we're helping to educate all players so if you're a scholar you're a new player and you want to kickstart your mom career come and join we've got lots of opportunities if you're aware equally lots of opportunities with the citizenship citizenship facility that we're building loads of interesting stuff we're trying to take guilds to the next level do loads of sort of funky api and technology shit to really take it forward but i'm really excited so yeah tune in next time for some more mom content and also other play to earn content we're not just about mom and uh yeah we'll see you next time